Okay, great. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today from the uh, Public Health Command Center. Uh, we are, of course, working hard to soak in all the information from a variety of sources, uh, working to validate that information, and working especially hard to share that information as much as we can um, across Rowan County, um, everything having to do with coronavirus. And um, we just want to make sure that everybody has the information that they need, uh, which brings us to today. Um, so again, thanks very much for spending some time with us. I'd like to start with some introductions. Um, uh, of course, today we have with us uh, Nina Oliver. Um, she will be answering uh, all of your questions today. Uh, she's Rowan County's Health Department Director. Uh, she's been the director for six years and has been in public health overall for 17 years. So welcome, Nina. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Um, and I am uh, Chris Solis, and I'm the Chief of Emergency Services for Rowan County. Um, and uh, I'll be kind of moderating our discussion today and, and uh, relaying your questions to Nina so that we can uh, get, get some information for you. Um, and uh, our department at Emergency Services is in charge of the county's EMS service, uh, emergency management, and fire services. Uh, so that's just a little bit about what we do. Um, so we're grateful that you've taken uh, some time to participate with us today. Um, the purpose here is to get together uh, to describe the virus itself. I know that there are a lot of questions uh, and there's a ton of information uh, everywhere. And, and so we just want to uh, offer you a, a chance to, to get some clarity on some of the information related to the virus itself, uh, some of those health-related questions. Um, so we won't focus on uh, some of the enforcement or legal uh, questions, uh, but we'll consider hosting another call uh, if there's enough interest in that. Um, today, we really want to focus on, on health, okay? So, um, let me start with this. Uh, Nina, I, I wanted to start uh, and ask you to give us an overall description of uh, just what the, what the virus is. Um, can you tell us what is uh, so important to know about it in general? Sure, thank you so much, Chris, for, um, for introducing and, and hosting this. Um, I'll start a little bit, I'll, I'll address your question and, and I'll start a little bit about um, what public health does during a public health crisis, if that's okay, Chris. Um, Cause a lot of people don't know what our role is and, and how we can uh, assist uh, in this uh, situation. So public health on a, if we did not have a, a, a pandemic, public health on normal day, every day, um, does investigations for communicable disease. So if, if there was a, let's say, an outbreak of E. coli at a local restaurant, our job is to go into the restaurant and um, conduct investigations. And that is, um, um, that allows us to see who, who is sick, how to prevent the sickness. It gives tips on, we give suggestions, recommendations, guidelines to the restaurant, how to clean, how to prevent further infection. Um, and then talking one-on-one -on -one with the families. So this is more of a larger scale um, outbreak, if you will. Um, it is a, it's called a pandemic. Uh, a pandemic is, is typically seen, um, it's a novel virus and or a new virus that we um, um, haven't seen before. So um, one of the things that people are are comparing this to is flu. And, and I will say there are some aspects of it that, that are similar and that are the same. Um, some of the symptoms are the same, um, um, but the two major differences between this virus and the flu virus is the flu virus, Chris, has, um, has a treatment and it has a vaccine or a preventer. So when every year when you go and get your flu vaccine, you are preventing um, from getting that flu virus. This, because it's so novel and or new, 
we don't have that weapon yet. We don't have those two weapons. We don't have treatment, although treatment is being looked at. There are some studies that are being looked at, um, but there's nothing like an antiviral that we can just dispense and say, here, take this like we can with the flu. Um, and then there is no preventer and or vaccine. So the only thing um, that we can do to prevent it or, and our only weapon uh, against the virus is what we have been talking about for weeks now is social distancing. And um, I'll definitely get back and get into that a little bit more, but um, just to circle back, public, public health role in this is again, um, like any communicable disease outbreak or situation is to um, investigate. So if we get positive, um, coronavirus test results, our job is to contact that person, take, um, take down history. Um, we have to do an interview. The interview um, typically lasts um, about 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Um, we get a thorough history um, and then we um, talk with them about preventing and what they should do next. And then we also talk with their direct contacts. So those direct contacts, um, know that they have been exposed and so they don't um, expose others. So we do investigation, we also do um, education. So this is part of that, um, that public health role is to educate um, and I do education and we have our um, community health, um, um, health education program or division that also educates on the um the coronavirus and how to prevent that great great thank you nina um that's um very helpful to understand uh kind of the big picture there um and so i do want to ask you've talked about it in a couple different settings before the general characteristics of of the virus itself one thing that that i think uh you know might be um uh, kind of assumed or, or just questioned uh, in the general public is, is how, how this uh, virus is transmitted. Is it, and, and can you describe the difference between um, a, a contact and versus an airborne also? Sure. So um, just to go over signs and symptoms, I'll start with that first and then kind of talk a little bit about how viruses work. Um, uh, the symptoms of coronavirus are similar, as I said, to the flu. Um, you're going to have fever. You're going to have dry cough, um, probably some tiredness. Um, and for those types of symptoms, um, call your doctor, explain to them your symptoms. They'll either decide to um, test you or not test you. A lot of the recommendations right now is if you're having those mild symptoms, um, you can stay home and get well. Um, however, if you're having um, uh, what's called shortness of breath, um, if you're feeling tightness, heaviness, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, blue, uh, blue, uh, blue lips or a grayish color to your skin, that, that's considered a, 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 an emergency. Um, and we would suggest that you um, call 911 or go to the emergency department immediately um, for anything like that. But again, if you have just the fever, cough, and tiredness, call your provider. They will decide either to test you or not test you. Um, but you would need to really spend time in bed, at home, social distancing, away from folks. Um, so to talk a little bit about how, how viruses work, Chris, um, a virus is a living organism. Um, it cannot re replicate without a host. It has to have a host. And so typically humans are its host. Um, so the way it jumps from human to human, um, different viruses and or bacteria travel in different ways. So some can travel airborne and so when something is airborne, for example, um, um, tuber tuberculosis or TB can be airborne. So what that means is if someone is positive for TB and has an active TB infection, 
and they cough, um, that, um, that illness can stay in the air and circulate in the air for, for quite some time. Um, now, when you have something like the flu or coronavirus, um, if I was infected with the coronavirus and I coughed, typically that won't stay in the air. It is not a, an airborne disease. Um, it is typically thought of as a droplet disease. So what that usually means is the virus will stay in your, when you, when you cough, there's spit, saliva, mucus that comes out. It'll stay in those droplets and then, and then typically fall. So it's where I think the, um, the misunderstanding is, is, is everyone thinks that the coronavirus is circulating in the air, it's airborne. Where, where we have seen it, it is not really the case. So that's why we say the six foot difference. So when six foot um, distance between you and another person. So when you cough, you've got that distance between yourself and that person. So when you cough, um, that virus will be in those droplets and will land instead of circulating. So we wanna make sure we, we keep that six foot difference. Um, so, um, I have had lots of questions, Chris, and this might be a question that um, you're going to be um, asking me or have received, but how long does the virus live? So it depends on the material it lands on, uh, but just as a general overall answer, the virus can live between um, a few hours to about 48 hours, about two days without a host. So if I'm at home and I'm positive for the coronavirus and I sneeze and um, my droplets or mucus land on the kitchen countertop um, and I don't clean, then that virus can stay there for, you know, for several hours to a couple of days, but then it dies because it needs a living cell to reproduce. Um, so luckily, uh, it won't stay there for weeks. It will stay there for a few days, but that is why it is so important to clean your high touch surfaces. So if you're at home um, and um, I would suggest cleaning high stuff uh, surfaces, high touch surfaces at least once a day. Um, and I would suggest places such as your kitchen countertops, your keyboards, cell phones, cell phones are, are pretty dirty. So I clean mine every day, doorknobs, your desks, um, things of that, things of that nature. Great. Great. Okay. So, um, I, I see that a, a few of you that have joined us are entering uh, questions in the Q and a area. Um, perfect. Please continue to do that. I want to take a minute and address a couple of these, uh, right now. Um, so one of these is, uh, what is the breakdown of COVID-19 cases in Rowan County uh, in nursing homes, assisted living facilities, jails, et cetera, and, um, and, and uh, outside of those type facilities? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a screen of our county um, dashboard that, that is probably the best source of information for a short description like that describes our current conditions. And then I'll ask our facilitators kind of in the background to post that, uh, that website out also so that uh, everybody can view it. And then um, Nina, while I'm describing this, can you uh, also going to, uh, can you also uh, prepare um, to talk to us about the, the nursing home aspect of this? Um, so let me share a screen here. Oh, I think, uh, one of our facilitators is going to help here. Um, well, while they while they uh, get that together, uh, Chief T.J. Brown is our uh, division chief of emergency management, and so he can uh, help help to get that. But Nina, did you want to touch on the uh, nursing homes and assisted living facilities as far as uh, their concern with case count? Sure. So um, with any uh, oh, I think we've got the dashboard up, Chris. Yep, a absolutely. So um, for, for everybody viewing, this, this dashboard is available through 
uh, Rowan County's uh, website. Um, and uh, again, we'll, we'll post that link up, but you can see uh, some of the uh, information that we've uh, gathered and validated. And so uh, this is updated uh, towards the end of each day. Um, and you can see that we're at 208 uh, positive tests so far. Um, and uh, we do have seven deaths in the county at this point. Um, and then you can also the, go through and, and see some of the other um, cases by race uh, and also by, by gender. Um, the, the uh, you know, I guess the most, um, I, al I always like to point out the number of, of individuals that have recovered too. So of the 208, we do have individuals that are recovering and that's an important part to this, to, to realize that, that there are individuals uh, recovering and then this is, um, uh, you know, something that we can get through, uh, especially together. So Nina, I'll let you finish up with the, with the other part of that question. Sure, so as you can imagine, any, any type of congregate site, um, um, home locations such as nursing homes, long-term long -term care, nursing facilities, retirement homes, um, prisons and jails, they're really a priority population. Um, and that is because um, what we've, the best way to prevent the virus is to social distance, um, is to remove yourself from being around other people. However, with these particular populations, they can't do that. That's their home, um, whether they wanna be there or not, um, such as like the jail population, that is where they live. And so it, it's considered a very, it is considered a prioritized population if a case occurs. So um, we, along with local public health, along with state public health, look at those facilities as priority populations. And so we work um, pretty much hand in hand with the facility, uh, provide them with the current state and um, uh, uh, CDC guidelines, recommendations, how to clean, what to do with the positive and the negative um, uh, uh, test cases, both with clients and staff, how to prevent further cases, um, what PPE should be worn. Um, and so um, everyone is aware of our um, outbreak here at, um, in, in Rowan County at a, a long-term care facility. And so we are on the phone with them multiple times a day um, because it's, it's such an important population. Um, we prioritize that. Okay, great. Um, let me take one of these other questions and we'll continue down the list of some of the uh, questions we've received ahead of time also. Uh, this question is, should we be doing more to stop the spread of COVID-19? And how is it that uh, car wash facilities are essential? Um, and so, yes, we should uh, continue to do what we've uh, asked everybody to, uh, to do, which is the social distancing. Uh, that is, with, without a doubt, hands down, um, the biggest thing that we can do um, to protect ourselves and each other um, and to get, get through this um, as, uh, with, with as little impact as possible. Um, so th that's how I would answer the first part of that question. Continue to stress social distancing in, in your circles all the time. Um, it's not easy, but it's essential. Um, and then- and uh, If I may, Chris. Yes. If I may. Um, and as uh, the beginning of this, um, remember this, this is our only weapon. So we don't have a vaccine. We don't have treatment. We have used social distancing time and time again. There are different countries and different states, even different states in the United States right now that um, enacted social distancing earlier than other states. And you can see there's the impact between those two states. The one that, that, um, that started social distancing sooner and has more stringent um, requirements have many less cases um, than the state that has not. So it's interesting to see see how that is being played out in, in the US right now. We can look at some other countries that have done that. 
Um, so again, social distancing is our only weapon. Um, and, and it's so simple, yet so effective. And so that's why you keep hearing uh, public health officials and emergency management, local, gov uh, local government, and uh, the governor himself say, please follow the social distancing guidelines. So on top of social distancing, so that's only traveling if it's essential. So um, leaving your home if you have to work, get food um, and um, medication, things like that. Um, stay six feet apart from each other. If you're going out um, to those stores, only send one family member. Um, you know, my husband and I, we've got a family of five that lives in the house and we, you know, food shopping is what we do, it's our thing. So, uh, but we've unfortunately had to stop that. And, and my husband is the only one that goes out of the house now and does food shopping. And when he does his food shopping, he puts a mask on and he puts gloves on. So that's also recommended now. So if you go out, please wear a, a mask, um, whether that's a surgical mask or people are using um, cloth masks also. So you could use a handkerchief uh, or a handmade mask too. Hand washing is also extremely important. Um, we don't want to forget our hand washing. Um, I have read articles about people, um, instead of hand washing, we're using our hand sanitizers. Now, hand sanitizers are very effective, and I would I carry it and I use it all the time. But I also hand wash um, multiple times a day, and that's with warm, soapy water a minimum of 20 seconds at a time. So um, social distancing, masks, gloves, hand washing. Um, another really big thing is not touching your face. Um, that's very difficult to do. Um, I, I have had to learn not to touch my face. I still do it, um, but we've got to remember on our face um, we've got three entryways into our body. So that's the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. The virus, if we have the virus on our hands, even if we're gloved, the virus on the gloves and we touch our face have now three entranceways, the mucous membranes into our system. And so we want to make sure we don't touch our face, cover our cough, um, and then... Um, Disinfect, as I spoke about earlier, disinfect high touch spaces, cell phone, kitchen countertop, keyboards, steering wheels, and doorknobs. Okay, great. Um, so, so the other part of that question was about car wash facilities being essential or not. Um, and, and so it, this is kind of going down that, that legal road that we didn't um, intend to go down. So I'll give you a quick answer, answer because it is uh, related to social distancing. Um, if businesses are able to ensure uh, that, that social distancing measures are in place, uh, then, then they're able to um, apply for uh, some leeway in, in that area. Um, so, Nina, one of the questions uh, we've received beforehand um, was, is, is related to um, the next month or so. Um, what do you see as, as our peak activity time? And, and do you think the virus will increase um, or decrease with the stay at home order? It's a good question. Um, there are several models that are out there that public health officials and healthcare providers use to kind of estimate and or guesstimate when the peak is. Um, it, it, is it varies. Um, I do think we've not reached our peak yet. I think we're gonna see more in the next couple of weeks. Um, uh, by making sure we continue to social distance and taking that seriously, it will help, but it's gonna take time. It's not, uh, it's not a snap your fingers and, um, oh, there's no more cases. It, it's gonna take time. Um, not everyone is following um, these directives and requirements. Um, so, uh, we've got that to worry about, but we also have to, I, I believe Chris and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, um, the stay at home has been in place for a couple weeks now. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. That, uh, maybe a little bit longer, but that's, that's a good estimate. Yeah. 
So we we should start to see the impacts from that. And I know a couple states have um, they started to flat they started to flatten out, which is um, uh, instead of having uh, lots of cases shoot up all at one time. They're starting to flatten out, and that's that's a good thing because we don't want to overwhelm our healthcare system, hospitals, and, and doctors uh, with so many people sick at one time. Uh, but I, I really think it's going to take a little while um, to see the impact. I also think that um, uh, if we loosen up social distancing um, too quickly, um, we could see a resurge of cases again. So it, it really is a, a, a tricky balancing act on um, um, how and when we uh, those social distancing requirements should be loosened. Um, I would guesstimate, now this is just Nina's opinion and it, it is not um, anyone else's, I haven't read it anymore, but I would guesstimate probably another um, six weeks in okay. order to be really effective. Okay, great. Um, so uh, one of our questions in the Q&A window has more to do with social distancing. So I'll address that really quick. Um, can we ask for more strict social distance and, and then we can get through this faster. So uh, there is a newer executive order uh, from the governor's office that has in fact uh, made social distancing uh, a little bit stricter as far as businesses are concerned, um, and reducing the number, the amount of foot traffic or the amount of people in, in a store and also uh, discussing kind of the, the flow of, of foot, foot traffic inside of a store. So um, they have gotten a little bit stricter and um, uh, yeah, Nina is absolutely correct. We, we can't let up and that's that's our biggest advantage right now is the distancing um earlier uh well last week um before the going into the easter holiday i had issued out a challenge to community leaders and um to all of our citizens too uh through the newspaper and i would say that the the same message still holds true i would ask each one of you that are on here um share the importance of social distancing with at least 10 people you know uh, in, in any circles that we have, email, uh, telephone, social media, um, we, we definitely need help in, in pushing that message and you can be a real uh, key. So that's something that you can do to help is, is share that message. Um, so Nina, this is another question that we got beforehand. Um, I, the, the question is, uh, is this, I am a local resident born and raised here in Salisbury. Uh, I am worried about getting the coronavirus because me and my father uh, both have underlying uh, conditions. I have type one diabetes, and he has mm -hmm. asthma. Um, how should we How should we think about that? Sure, that's that's a good question and and a, a concern to many. Um, so there are pockets of populations that are at higher risk for additional complications of the coronavirus if they um, test positive for it. And I'll just um, name a few, those that are 65 and older, um, those that are, are, are obese or have a BMI um, larger than um, um, 40, um, those with um, diabetes, um, um, those that have liver or um, heart disease, um, things of that nature. Now, um, it's important um, for this population along with everyone else but in particular this population to make sure you are following the guidelines and recommendations of social distancing, not going out unless it's essential travel, make sure you have a mask if you cannot um, get your hand on a mask because uh, they are kind of limited at right now as, as everyone is aware, you can make a cloth mask, um, put that bandana around your, your face um, or actually uh, um, fine cloth masks being sold. Um, I think Etsy selling some, or I'm sure uh, um, uh, uh, Amazon or eBay, um, but a cloth mask is effective too. So, um, and then also lots of cleaning, make sure you're, you're cleaning your high areas, um, high touch areas. 
in addition to that, um, don't allow anyone in your home. Um, I have restricted um, um, any visitors from, from my home and it's been like that for the last three weeks, no visitors at all. So um, those are definitely some things that you can do to keep yourself, um, and I believe she said it was her father, um, safe. That's right. Yeah. So some, some definite uh, sacrifices now that, that will pay off in the long run. Uh, absolutely. Um, thank you. Uh, let's see. How about we'll, we'll move down to another one. Um, can you also tell us about the testing process and maybe what should be expected after someone test positive or negative, one of the specific questions is, um, can you explain the recommendations for people that have mild symptoms? I think you talked about that, but specifically the, the testing process, can you go over you know, how the mild symptoms affect uh, the, the testing process? Sure, so um, there are certain criteria um, that you must meet in order to get a test. Um, that's going to be at the determination of your provider. So if you're showing those mild symptoms, the cough, um, fever, tiredness, your, um, your provider may or may not decide to test you. Um, but that would be at their discretion. Um, other additional, uh, worsening, um, symptoms such as shortness of breath, um, uh, also meets the criteria for being tested. Um, testing differs, um, test results differ depending on um, certain aspects. So there's the regular test and then there's the rapid test. The rapid test you can get done um, uh, quickly. Uh, the results are, are almost immediate. You've got to wait about 15, 20 minutes and you'll have a, a, a result right then and there. Other standard tests will take um, additional time and that the time and the results of that test is gonna depend on which lab it ends up at. So your provider does the test, it's a nasal swab, um, sends that off to a lab. That lab then, depending on if they have backlog um, or other issues, will then result your test results to your provider. Um, uh, and that would, that's going to, that, uh, depending on backlogs and other things, will determine how long it'll take to get um, test results back. Um, if you're negative, some doctors have done, have said, well, if you're negative, if, you know, if no news is good news. If you're negative, I'm not going to contact you. If you're positive, um, they almost always contact you. But in addition to that, if you have a positive case, that positive um, result will be reported. It is a, it's uh, by law mandated to be reported to the health department. Um, and then once we get that positive result, um, in addition to your provider talking to you about it, the health department will contact you. And um, as I explained earlier, um, we will contact you and kind of gone, go over medical history when you think you started feeling symptoms, who you've been around, if you've been any been in any direct close contact with folks, um, things of that nature. Um, that's called an investigation. Uh, we do that to help prevent additional cases and also provide you with um, guidelines and recommendations on on what you need to do and what your direct contacts need to do, whether that's being quarantined or isolated for 14 days. Um, that's what we would do during our investigation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so I, I'd like to offer a little bit of information to everybody listening. Also, um, there, there's another question, and, and this was actually a question submitted before we started, um, and then it popped up in the Q&A here also, having to do with the, um, the state uh, reporting. Um, let me see if I can find it here. The question in the Q&A is, if you get test results from the state, why does the information on the county website lag so far behind the state's website? Um, so it's not that there is a lag of information. Um, both sites are correct. Uh, the difference is the time of day that the results are being reported. So the state reports results at about uh, 11, 1130 uh, in the morning. 
and um, their information is correct. Uh, their information is uh, what they have uh, at, at that point that they have reported. The county, uh, our information is reported at uh, oh, sometime somewhere between four and five uh, in the evening, um, just according to uh, the how where we're at in the validation process for for all the information that we're seeing. So um, the advantage that we have at, at the county level is uh, the health department nursing staff is doing an amazing job. Um, we, we have a team of several uh, nurses uh, pouring through all the, the data and information related to the positive cases, and they're getting all the information uh, and verifying all the information before we push all that out to, to the public. One of our biggest um, goals and desires is to give accurate information to the public. So um, once we uh, publish uh, all the information that we know about for the day, it, it gets posted on our website. Um, and it also is shared in a, in a press release. Um, and so if you would, on a daily basis, if you would like to have the most uh, current and up-to-date information, I would say to use uh, Rowan County's website. Now, at certain times, both websites uh, could have differing numbers. Um, and that's okay because both information is correct uh, it's just being released at different times uh, of the day. So it's not necessarily that there's a lag, there's just a, a difference in reporting times, okay? Um, so uh, Nina, if, if I could, I, I wanted to go back and um, one of the, I, I guess I should say one of the observations or one of the perceptions that somebody has out there, uh, this is this is what they, they've seen. Um, doctors are, are passing off, um, uh, COVID cases is, is what I assume doctors are passing it off as allergies or something else. And people are still going out and infecting people because they were misdiagnosed. Um, this relates kind of to the symptoms that you were talking about. And maybe you can help us with that one. So um, that, that is correct. Um, we have seen cases, um, not here in Rowan County, but um, in the state and or in the nation where um, people are going to their doctor's offices and um, they've got allergies, they, what they think is allergies, um, and either their doctor won't test them or they'll test them even though the criteria is not being met, but they'll still be tested. And those that are just having a runny nose are testing positive for um, the coronavirus. Um, there was another case and actually several cases that I've heard about people losing their sense of smell and or their taste, um, which has not been listed as a prime symptom of this um, illness, but um, there has been multiple accounts of that and they get tested and they are, um, they are positive. We're also seeing um, asymptomatic. So people like you and I, I feel great. I feel completely fine going to the doctors for a physical. The doctor just says, oh, I'm going to test you. They're not following any criteria, but it's the doctor's prerogative, the provider's prerogative to test. And those asymptomatic people are becoming pos are, are positive. So um, the way around that, and I, and I know people are going to be like, I hope she doesn't say social distancing again. But the way around that um, is again, social distancing. So um, everyone should be staying at home unless there's essential travel needed. And then when they're going out um, to wear masks and gloves. So that's, that's a key point when you're going out. You might not even know you have the coronavirus because you feel fine. You feel like you do every day. But by placing that mask on your face, you are protect, per, um, protecting those around you so you're not infecting others. So that's why it's so important for us to follow those directives of staying in place, um, staying at home, and then when we go out to the store, um, wear our masks and our gloves. Okay, okay, excellent. Um, so, so this is uh, <clears throat> one of those uh, questions really relating or that can be I think kicked back to your own healthcare provider, but um, this came in earlier also. When a test comes back negative, but 
the patient has symptoms that suggest um, they may have the virus, um, may a second test be performed to double check the results? So, yes, um, that would be up to the provider to retest. Um, is that common? Probably not. But um, also remember that there are other things besides coronavirus circulating still. While flu is down, um, it's decreased, we still have that flu virus strain still circulating. So um, understand that if you get a coronavirus test and it comes back negative, um, if you get a flu test, it could come back positive. Um, or, you know, we've got allergies too. Um, uh, people have allergies and have a hacking cough um, and may think they have the coronavirus, get tested, and, and it's negative. Um, again, like Chris said, I think um, that would, if, if you want to be tested again, I would share your concerns um, with your provider and your provider will be um, the one to make that decision on whether or not to uh, retest you. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Um, so I'd like to ask about the um, idea of, of community spread. And, and I, th I think you've um, described it uh, in a couple different scenarios that you've already talked about, but specifically that, that term, what should we think about that? One of our questions uh, commented that plenty of people are testing positive that don't even know where they got it from. So is that related to community spread? Yes. The simple answer is yes. So when we started having cases in, in the U.S., um, they were usually travel, travel acquired. So that person um, either was in a country where there was a high rate of um, coronavirus cases or uh, attended a, a conference overseas or um, a large gathering, uh, and then they come back. And when they tested positive for the coronavirus, during that investigation piece that public health does, um, we were finding a pattern of folks. Um, yes, they had traveled, they had gone to conferences, they went to a country where there was lots of um, case uh, reporting. But um, now it has, the virus has essentially latched on and it is community uh, acquired. And what that is, is just the virus. You don't have to travel. Um, you're here and uh, we're going to use Rowan County, for example, because this is uh, specific for Rowan County residents. Um, you're here in Rowan County and you're not traveling, you're not going overseas or you're not going to a conference, a large conference, and you get you 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 test positive. And that's just because the virus has um, essentially found its footing and um, has um um, gone from travel from person to person. Um, and so, yes, there is community transmission. It, it, it is probably the primary, primary way that people are testing positive now. Um, uh, and that's why it's, uh, again, important to um, social distance and wear your mask when you're out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so we want to, we have about 15 minutes left. And, and so I have a couple of questions that were submitted uh, beforehand and then uh, in our Q&A window, um, you know, there's a couple of questions asking about um, some of the sheltering uh, concerns that, that we might have. Uh, and then a little bit more clarification on some of the nursing home conditions. So we'll use those kind of things to, to wind down here. Um, so let me ask you this question about uh, some of our citizens that that work or some of the, the folks that work in Rowan County, but live outside of the county. So how are their uh, test results and how is their information handled? So um, again, uh, Chris, you said that they work in Rowan County, but live in a separate county. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So your so if you work in Rowan County and then you live in um, Cabarrus County, say, and um, you aren't feeling good and you um, go to a provider, whether that's in Cabarrus or Rowan, and you get tested and you test positive, um, 
you will be contacted by the health department, by public health of the county that you live in. So I live in Cabarrus County. If I test positive, I will um, be contacted by Cabarrus County Health Department. And so um, um, they will then do that investigation. So they'll, they'll contact me and then they'll talk to me about my direct contacts and then contact my direct contacts. So that'll be done based off of the county that you live in. Okay, good, great, thank you. Um, so I, I wanted to take a, a, a minute because this is kind of a shared um, operation between uh, emergency management and, and uh, the health department um, and Rowan Helping Ministries for that matter as, as the largest shelter in, in the county. So very early on, um, we, we worked with uh, the Rowan Helping Ministries and um, Nova Hospital because there were um, a, a few homeless individuals that were uh, being tested at Novant and um, and we needed a place to put the put these folks while they waited uh, for their test results or if they were positive while they waited uh, their their isolation periods. Um, so uh, since since a very early time, um, the county has actually, um, uh, rented uh, hotel rooms uh, for these specific cases. Um, Rowan, the first step in this is Rowan Helping Ministries has worked with us to uh, dedicate space inside the shelter as a first option. Um, and, you know, we've worked with them to make sure that it, that it, uh, it has the appropriate facilities for somebody to, to be able to self-isolate. Um, and then uh, if, if they don't have uh, enough room if, if more people end up needing a place to go while they wait test results or while they wait out their isolation times, um, then we, we put them up in, in hotel rooms. Um, so that is something that the county has done to help all of our citizens. Uh, we, we can't forget about anybody and we won't forget about anybody. Um, and, and that's just something that, that we've worked uh, very hard to do and that's a, a lot of different agencies and a lot of coordination that's taking place. So we're, we're really trying to um, address um, as many of the needs as, as we possibly can uh, as, as they come up. Um, and so I, I think uh, one of the other, um, I guess, higher level interest uh, type topics is obviously the nursing homes, Nina. Um, so can you describe a little bit, you know, how, so for everybody listening to us, we, we have a lot of things to, to consider. We want to give as much public information as we can um, because everybody needs to, to be informed and um, be able to use the information to, to help your, your own condition. Um, the other thing though, is there are certain legal requirements that the health department and, and that all of us are, are obligated to, to adhere to, um, but then there's also a, a matter of privacy um, for individuals. So, um, you know, if I had a, a family member or you had a family member that was um, part of one of these uh, affected communities, um, you know, you would have certain expectations of privacy also. So there are three very um, delicate balances that we have to maintain there. And uh, Nina and her staff are doing, are doing an amazing job. But Nina, I wanted to ask you if you can tell us, um, you know, some of the things that you're doing uh, to help some of the, these nursing homes that are, that are affected uh, and that have a, a large number of, of positive cases. Sure. So um, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, part of Rowan, um, part of our job is to investigate. Um, and so that, in particular goes to, is specific for um, congregate sites such as nursing homes. And, and um, with the outbreaks uh, in nursing homes that have occurred in Rowan County, we have worked very close with um, uh, the nursing homes. Um, we have provided them with um, ourselves and the state epidemiologists have provided them with the recommended guidelines on how to um, uh, 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 prevent further cases. Um, we've 
uh, had testing done. Uh, we're offering testing to all the, um, the staff there. We're offering, um, we've offered education. We've done um, site visits and that includes a public health nurse along with a, um, an environmental health specialist who's gone in there and um, made sure that the recommendations that we have asked of the facilities um, uh, have been complied with. Um, our last um, uh, site visit was yesterday and the report back is they have complied with, with what we've asked of them. Um, so, you know, as you had said, Chris, there we want to provide uh, enough information to the public and to our community um, uh, to make you guys, to make everyone feel um, safe. But then there's also that, that delicate balance of um, this is still a communicable disease and there are uh, not, not just policies, but actual general stat statute laws, laws that we have to abide by to make sure um, um, we are not giving away information that could identify individuals with communicable diseases. So um, that's important to us, um, but it's also important for us to um, make sure everyone else is equipped with the necessary information um, and that we conduct our, our investigations thorough enough that um, we can help prevent additional um, cases in the nursing homes and in our community. Okay, great. So I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try to wrap us up and you know, I'll give you a, a chance for some last thoughts here too. But um, you know, one of the uh, questions in the, in the Q&A has to do with you know, the, the increase in, in numbers over a very short period of time um, and should that be concerning? And what I would tell everybody is, um, you know, we have to look at, at where the, the numbers were. In this case, it was a, a large number from a single uh, source or, uh, and, and so that is the reason. So we have to look at the information, the data, the numbers, and just do what we can to understand them. So um, the health department is, is working very closely with the the places where those large numbers came from. So um, it's not indicative of, of a larger um, problem outside of those, those facilities. It's, it's just that that, um, that that had taken place within that, that facility. So um, should we be concerned? Well, in, in the sense that we're concerned about the virus overall, yes. And we want everybody to, to um, please listen to, to the recommendations and, and, you know, stay separated from each other. Um, but in terms of, of that, um, not, not necessarily. So, um, Nina, do you have any uh, closing thoughts? Um, uh, sure, a couple. Um, and I'm in, you, I'll probably repeat myself, but um, please continue to follow the recommendation and guidelines of social distancing. Uh, make sure you are hand washing um, uh, multiple times a day. Um, make sure you are in groups less than ten. Um, stay six feet away from folks. Um, uh, wear your mask and your gloves when you go out. Um, try not to touch your face. Again, if you have germs on your hands, they can go it. They have three entry points here, so try not to touch your face. Um, clean and disinfect high touch areas. Um, also, there's so much, um, there is so much information um, circulating um, in the media, social media, Facebook, TikTok, all that stuff. Um, it's really important that you get your information from a reliable source. And um, we get our our um, information from the CDC. Um, you're welcome to go to the CDC. There is lots of information there, um, but please also look at the Rowan County website. Um, it's very well maintained. We release daily press releases every day. Um, updates on numbers um, are done daily. Um, also, um, and I'm not sure, Chris, if you've shared this yet or not, but um, if you have a question or concern, um, 
I I would ask you to call our dedicated call um, line. It's dedicated for COVID-19 purposes. And I'm gonna give everyone that number. That is 980-432-1800. And then you can also connect via email if you prefer to email. That is COVID-19 at rowancountync.gov. And we are responding and replying back um, to all phone calls and emails. Great, thank you, Nina, very much. Um, I'm also gonna add a, uh, a link. I'm gonna send this out right now to everybody. So look in your uh, informational windows. Um, this link that I that, uh, sent out, um, this is uh, <clears throat> another way that you can pass along a concern that you're having. Uh, this is a web form that we're using, uh, and, it, and information in there can go straight to our dispatch center and be uh, evaluated and, and routed to somebody that can look into your concern. Um, so that's what, uh, that's what we have for you. A lot of places to um, uh, submit some information. We'll continue finding ways and, and new ways to communicate information and answer questions. Um, so I, I really appreciate the time that you all have taken and, and the uh, care that you demonstrated by, by participating with us today. Um, and I just want to assure you that uh, Rowan County is, um, you know, very serious about uh, our response efforts in this, in this whole matter. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying everything that we can to address all the needs, uh, especially as uh, things change daily, hourly sometimes. So. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, uh, I seriously appreciate your time and, uh, and your concern. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.